Hi everyone, it's Vicky here, and after popular demand, I decided to do a flip through two of my art journals, and I am also going to show you how you can expand the spine of your art journals and let them breathe. This is my first art journal. It has uh, many projects for uh, about a couple of years since I wasn't making too many layouts at the beginning. And you can see how bulky it uh, has become. I am working on a... This is a moleskin sketchbook and this is another moleskin sketchbook and, uh, you, that I have finished. And you can see how bulky the first one is against the second one. At the moment I'm working on a ranger art journal but uh, I am going to leave those aside for now and I am going to show you the first one. You can see that I have expanded the spine and just because my art journal was too bulky I needed to make it to let it breathe somehow because it was cracking. So you can see how the spine was and how big it is now. I am going to walk you through the process at the end of this video so you can see how I am doing that. My first art journal became so bulky because I was taking dimensional elements without paying attention on uh, how bulky it's going to get. So I am going to walk you through the pages, but first uh, let's see the outside. I like it to keep it simple, so I have stuck down a few Prima flowers with one metal tag. I have covered it up with uh, fabric and I just did a few stenciling for uh, some details at the front and at the back. I like to keep it simple without many elements sticking out because I take it with me on my travels. So this is the first uh, page I have ever made and uh, most of the pages that you will be seeing today are already on YouTube. And this is another one that I really love. I used gelatos on this and you can see how this cracked. It's uh, broken, the spine is broken there. But I don't really mind. I think that uh, having all those um, defects actually make it a very loved uh, art journal. So this is a layout I made for uh, 2013. I sometimes get inspired by the um, season, as you can see. And I always stamp the date somewhere so I know when each layout was done. This is a pink, a pink layout that I made just to stretch myself because I never use pink. And I am really happy with the outcome. And this is one of my favorites and your favorites as uh, far as I can tell because uh, I get so many reviews about this and so lovely, such a lovely feedback. I just love the dimensional books and the, it was a, one of those layouts that I had really so much fun making it. This is another layout that uh, I really love. It's so colorful and fun. And I loved that I used glossy accents on her boots as well as on the umbrella. And you can see how dimensional it is with all those uh, chipboard letters and uh, the dimensional uh, umbrella. Here's another colorful one with uh, buttons and uh, foam squares and also chipboard letters. And uh, you can see why it was so bulky, this uh, art journal. This is one of my favorites as well. I just love the fall colors and um, how the pumpkins turned out. And you can see that I have stamped the date as well. Oh, and this is uh, everyone's favorite. Wherever I go to workshops or uh, whoever sees this art journal is in love with this page. And I think it's because it's so clean and uh, simple somehow, while it's so colorful. Also the technique that I used for the background, it looks like a mosaic and I really really love it. It's one of my favorites for backgrounds. And uh, here is another one for Christmas. As you can see I have uh, gone through one year's uh, projects and now we are in uh, 2014. And as I flip through them, I cannot really tell which one is my favorite, but I should have a top 10 list. So this one is one of, that goes in my top 10 list of favorites. And uh, that's because I just love how striking the combination of orange and uh, blue is. And here is another one for spring. Now, as you can see, I have used uh, chipboard letters here again. And uh, I believe I used uh, gelatos for this layout. And if you pay attention to the elements that I stick on each page, you can uh, really tell for yourself why this uh, art journal became so thick. And here is my layout with the balloons. I just love the background. Also notice how thick those pages are, because that's because I stick uh, two pages together. So here is another favorite. I just love that um, I had the idea on this to use uh, photographs of my previous uh, art journal layouts. So those Polaroids are actually like this one is actually a snapshot of uh, the page with the cups. 
And here is another one in a totally different style where I use the black background and all those colorful ribbons. I like how those look. Notice how that uh, red color transferred on the other page, but re this uh, really doesn't bother me. I believe that happened because I used um, crackle paint there. Here is another favorite. I love how the um, watering can turned out and uh, I have uh, drawn this uh, water can uh, myself. And this was an example on how you can uh, make uh, an art journal just by using uh, papers on the background. Another page loaded with dimensional elements. The clothespins, the stars, everything was wood veneer. And on this page I also have uh, brads as well as uh, wood veneer airplanes. I just love uh, that um, luggage, how it turned out. And here is a, a one I made with uh, those Tim Holtz bottles where uh, I added uh, glossy accents on top and you can see how lovely they shine. And here is another example on how you can make an art journal layout by using only scrapbook uh, paper. I had this uh, beautiful line by October afternoon and I made this layout about books. And here is another uh, layout for about Christmas and uh, this wasn't published on uh, YouTube, I believe. And this layout is my daughter's favorite and uh, I just love how colorful and fun that page turned out. So that was um, the first art journal that I have ever made. Instead of having an elastic to close down my art journal, I have added ribbons and I never pressed too hard when I tie that bow and that's because I don't want to press to add some pressure on the pages and you can see how this was at the beginning with the elastic which I never use by the way even on uh, this uh, art journal because then uh, it, the pages are stuck together and they get sticky. So I am uh, going to tie this out and uh, here is uh, Ginger who came out for a visit to check out uh, what I'm doing. So now I'm going to to walk you through the second art journal that I have made and uh, all those layouts are also, most of them at least, are also published on uh, YouTube. I have uh, finished this art journal that I am going to show you way faster than the first one just because uh, the more you make art journals, uh, the more it becomes addictive. So I made uh, quite a few this uh, year. So here is uh, the one that I'm talking about and uh, you can see that it's not as uh, bulky as the first one but uh, on this one I haven't used uh, the last uh, four or five pages That's just to avoid uh, to make it uh, too thick and I have also avoided on uh, those pages to add um, a lot of uh, dimensional elements. So you can see that's about uh, three inches while the spine is about uh, half an inch. After making the flip through, I am going to show you how I am going to expand the spine as well as uh, dress up the cover. And this is the first uh, layout of this art journal. This was uh, inspired by my little cat and I just love how this uh, sits on uh, the roof. This is a great example of how you can make an art journal without having any stamps at all. It's a great example of how you can use uh, computer printouts as well as magazine cutouts. This is a Christmas layout that I made for one of my workshops. This was not published on YouTube, but I had so much fun teaching this on uh, the workshop and meeting the girls in Italy. And here is another layout that I have been teaching on a couple of workshops and uh, this is not published on YouTube as well. The tree, the tree branches, the birds, the birdhouse are all paper pieced and the birdhouse is actually dimensional. One of the things that I love doing is traveling. So here is another one about travel and uh, I have uh, used some metal uh, embellishments there. This is a layout that I made uh, mainly to try out some uh, of my new inks. I believe these are eyes inks and uh, they are very shimmery. So I just uh, wanted to try out how they blend and everything. And this is another layout that I have uh, been, I've gone crazy with color. I made this rainbow background and then I just had to add uh, white butterflies as the focal point because uh, the background was so busy. And you can see the metal elements as well on this page. 
Here is another example of uh, what you can do for uh, Christmas and the New Year's Eve. And uh, this is actually a, um, in, an interactive page because you can uh, pick up all those tickets, which are actually um, wishes for the new year. Here is a layout that goes up to the top 10 list of my favorites. I just love uh, this typewriter and, um, and another one that I really love with this uh, guitar and uh, the piano. I just love the border at uh, the top and at the bottom. I think that really made uh, the difference in this layout. And here's a fun one. I really This uh, page really makes me smile whenever I see it with those crazy birds by Tim Holtz. And another one that is uh, more of uh, my style, I just love uh, stacking things uh, one on top of the other at one edge of uh, the book, like the cupcakes or uh, the cups, the coffee cups. So here are the books now. This is another one about traveling. I just love the gold uh, stenciled uh, uh, details there, as well as uh, the photos that are actually real photos from my travels in Paris. This is a page I made that uh, was uh, published on the Simon Says Stamp uh, YouTube channel and I just love the puffy window and it actually has a fabric at the background as a curtain. And if you love movies, this is a lovely layout. I love the popcorns and how they fell off the popcorn box. And here is another page that I made and actually is uh, totally out of my comfort zone just because I used uh, purple and purple is uh, one of those colors that I never use. And this is the end of this art journal, so I am uh, going to walk you through the process of expanding the spine. I will list all the supplies that I am using to expand the spine just below in the details area. So let's get started. First of all, I am going to use my scissors and cut out the spine at the middle. I'm using my Tim Holtz scissors and I'll go all the way to the other side. So I have cut out the spine in half and the spine in my case isn't very ba badly damaged. The other one that I had on my first uh, art journal was uh, way um, more uh, cracked than this one. And now I am using my craft knife on the inside and what I'm doing is separating the actual uh, book from the cover. And you can see how the spine and uh, all those signatures are exposed there. So I'm separating uh, both the front and the back. Don't throw the cover, I will be using the same uh, front and back to cover up uh, the art journal. I am just going to add a bigger uh, spine. So I am going to separate those uh, two covers. And with my scissors I am going to clean up the edges. Now at this point and as I'm doing that I have to say that uh, in no way I am a bookbinding expert but this is uh, what works for me. I have been doing it uh, in uh, many of my art journals and even uh, to those that I have uh, never published, the more personal ones or the ones that I try out things and uh, it works fine so I keep doing this and uh, that's what I'm going to share with you today. Now that all the edges are nicely clear, cleaned, you can use your fingers or your uh, scissors or everything, anything. It doesn't have to be perfect, this is not going to show at the end. I am also going to cut out the elastic, which I won't be using for the reasons that I have explained for the first one. I will be using uh, ribbons to tie out the book. And now I'm using a uh, book binding tape. You can find this on uh, Amazon or you can use any tape that you have on hand at home. This is nice and uh, strengthens uh, the um, bonding of uh, the signatures. And I'm going to add two layers of this tape. This is not going to show again, so it doesn't have to be perfect. And I am adding this uh, book binding tape because this is going to make sure that uh, even though there are a few cracks inside the book, the pages are not going to be separated. Uh, in uh, the first art journal that I had, this um, spine was way worse than that. It was cracked and opened in uh, many places, but uh, this book binding tape actually saved the day. 
So this is how it's going to look at the end. And at this uh, stage, you have to uh, measure how much uh, wider you want your spine to be. So after measuring out, I have decided that I'll go with uh, one and a half inch instead of a uh, half an inch that it was at the beginning. This is heavy chipboard and I have used my paper trimmer. This is not going to cut it out all the way, but uh, it has made a nice uh, line so I can follow it with my craft knife. I am not uh, adding any pressure while I'm doing that. I'm using a metal ruler and um, I just go again and again all over without adding any pressure. This way you don't get the risk of moving the metal ruler while you add pressure to your craft knife. And now I'm measuring how high I want this to be and I will be using the same technique with my craft knife and the ruler to cut out the heavy chipboard and make it uh, to size. Of course you wouldn't have to do any of this if you are using a spiral art journal or a ring binded art journal but, uh, or if you don't use any embellishments at all on uh, your layouts but I do like to add dimension so I don't mind doing that at the end when uh, my art journal is finished. So I'm using this uh, <laughs> fabric which is actually a piece of uh, curtain from an Ikea curtain that I got and I love this uh, because it's uh, like canvas, it's very neutral, colored and it's a great idea to use up your favorite uh, fabric scraps to cover up your journals. I like to keep my covers uh, clean and simple without too many elements sticking out just because I take my art journals with me on my workshops. If they had uh, lots, of, lots of things going on on the front it would be very difficult for me to pack them and uh, take them with me but uh, you can always go as wild as you like for, on uh, the front of your art journals. I am just going to show you how I do it so you can uh, probably get inspired. I have used my scissors to cut out the fabric about 2 inches wider than I need to and now I will be using my matte gel medium to stick everything together. I decided to use a gel matte medium just because I have been uh, using this uh, again and again and I know that uh, I get a perfect result. What I love about using this to stick fabric on top of uh, my covers is that uh, gel medium doesn't uh, go through the fabric, it doesn't make it uh, hard like other glues does and uh, it doesn't uh, leave any residue on uh, the fabric. So you can see how perfect uh, finish that I, the perfect finish that I get. I will be doing the same technique on uh, the spine as well as on uh, the front uh, cover. At this stage it's very important not to stick uh, one uh, piece next to each other but uh, leave a small gap be in between so you can uh, uh, fold the pages, the front and the covers like I do here. Actually the gap is uh, the same uh, width as uh, the thickness of uh, your uh, covers. So I will be doing uh, the same thing for the front cover. And uh, then you can use a gel medium at uh, the edges of uh, this uh, cover and wrap uh, around all uh, the excess fabric. Now you also need to make sure that uh, you do a nice job on the corners and make them as neat as possible. And uh, here is the final result. You can see that uh, the inside is not perfect but it really doesn't matter since uh, I am going to stick uh, the journal on top. So now I'm using uh, two sides tape and uh, you need some uh, strong adhesive at this point. So I am going to cover up the whole uh, inside of the cover with uh, my sticky tape. For my ribbon I am going to use this seam binding and uh, at this stage you can use any ribbon that you like or thread or anything and uh, I have uh, made sure that I have a nice and long uh, piece of uh, ribbon so now that I have peeled off the backing of uh, this uh, uh, sticky tape I am going to stick it about the center of uh, the book covers. So now it's time to stick uh, the inside of the art journal and my book journal is uh, pretty much uh, ready.
All that's left to do is uh, to decorate the front. Now I am going to make a nice bow and I will uh, cut out with my scissors the excess of the ribbon. It's always a good idea in this stage to have a longer ribbon because uh, there is no way to go back and uh, do the same process again. So it's uh, better uh, to be safe than sorry. And this is uh, the first and uh, the second uh, art journal that I have showed you today. You can see how the same book can be so thick and uh, thin at the same time. So now I'm going to use one of those uh, brushes which is uh, made by Faber-Castell and it's uh, for uh, using it on uh, stenciling. And I'm going to do some stenciling with uh, gesso all over the front, the back and the spine of this uh, art journal. I'm not going to add too much but I want to add uh, definitely a few details here and there. And here is the finished result. Now that my gesso is nicely dry, I am going to stick on top some of the flowers. These flowers are by Prima and I have used the same flowers for the first art journal but in different color. I like to keep my art journals pretty much um, the same because uh, the way I store them, uh, when they look alike, they actually complement one another. I am using my hot glue gun to stick the flowers down and uh, as an extra embellishment I will be using one of those tags by Tim Holtz. These are metal tags and I am going to use uh, tacky glue to stick it down. I could have uh, used my hot glue gun to stick it down as well. Now for one of those holes at the end of the tag I will be using one of those brads. This is a brad that has a, a light green gem on top. But I am using my scissors to cut out those uh, legs from uh, the brad. I don't know how you call those thingies that uh, stick out. They were sticking out and I couldn't uh, hide them somehow. So I decided to uh, cut them out with the scissors and instead uh, stick uh, the gem on top of uh, the hole with my glue gun. So I'm making sure that everything is uh, nicely secured on uh, the front cover. And uh, my art journal cover is pretty much finished. So that was the video for today. I hope you had fun and got inspired. And if you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as give me thumbs up on my YouTube channel. And here are some close-up photos of the art journal covers. For more inspiration you can click any of the two videos on the screen now or you, if you are watching from a mobile device you can find links to these two videos just below in the details area. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already make sure to do so because this is the way to tell me that you love my videos and you want to see more. Thank you all for watching!